Hello and welcome to the CS First Hour of Code webinar. I'm Cassandra Fernandez. I'm a program manager here on the CS First team and I'm joined by Janelle today. Hi everyone, my name is Janelle Lamb. I'm an instructional designer and I'm also an elementary school teacher. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Yep, we're both pretty excited. So we'll spend some time first reviewing the teacher resources on this activity and then we're gonna dive into some hands-on coding time. I'll be channeling a first time CS first user and I'll be peppering Janelle with some questions throughout. Um, and we'll also try to answer some of your questions. So you can, through the webinar, um, click on a Q&A window, which you can open by clicking on the little box with a question mark at the bottom of your screen. And we'll try to answer some of those throughout and time permitting, we'll also return to those at the end of the webinar. To begin, let's start with a short overview of CS first. CS First is a free, easy to use CS curriculum, and it aligns with both the CSTA and ISTE standards for students at the readiness level. In CS First, students will watch instructional videos that introduce fundamental computer science concepts. And returning to our classroom teacher, Janelle, could you tell us how this actually looks in the classroom? Yeah, Cass, what I love about CS First is that while the students are learning computer science concepts, they're also learning 21st century skills, or as us teachers like to call them, the four C's. So while the students are going through the lesson, they'll develop this debugging mindset. That's because as they code, they'll keep iterating and trying out new things so that they know things aren't going to be perfect the first time. They'll make mistakes, but then they'll debug it, which is great. Um, they'll also practice teamwork because they'll collaborate with each other and they'll code alongside each other. They'll actually become each other's peer tutors, which I really enjoy. And they'll also develop some independent problem solving skills as they go through the lessons at their own pace. Great. As Janelle said, it's very collaborative. Yeah. You have that debugging mindset, which is so important. So that was the student side, but from the teacher librarian perspective, could you tell us how that might look? Yes, yeah, so as a teacher, I find that this activity is very easy to run in the classroom. So as a teacher, I introduce the activity and I kind of facilitate it. So that looks like walking. there's another student in the classroom who can help them answer that question. So like I said, there's a lot of peer learning going on and a lot of collaborating. Um, and as the students are coding, I as the teacher get to follow along or as I'm learning from another student on what they did to troubleshoot, then I myself get to learn computer science as well. So that's super fun for me too. Great. Yeah. So I think it's time to transition to our activity. Let's move on to Code Your Hero. What do you think about Hour of Code this year? Oh my gosh, I already did it with my class and it's so fun. So the students get to pick an everyday hero from their lives and create a program or even a game about them. And what resources do we have available for teachers? Yes, so there are a variety of resources that are available, which makes facilitating this activity super easy. So this activity comes with a lesson plan and the lesson plan offers step-by-step -step instructions um, it goes over the standards that are being addressed. It comes with a solution guide, which is always helpful. And there's also a script that teachers can read off and present it to their class. So if they don't feel confident about running computer science in their classroom, they can always fall back on the script. We also have an optional planning activity that is available, um, which is also avail available on the materials section of CS First. And have you actually done this planning activity in your classroom? Yes, so even though this is optional, I did decide to do this planning activity. So this year I'm teaching first grade, so we did this along with our eighth grade buddies. So in the optional planning activity, there is a guided drawing activity that the students can do where they draw a picture of their, co of their hero, but there's also this writing activity which fit perfectly with our narrative writing that we were doing in the classroom. So as you can see, there is a planning sheet where the eighth graders prompted my first graders to think about who the hero is in their life. And then after that, the first graders wrote a short paragraph about their hero. So the first graders got to practice writing an introduction sentence, adding details, and a closing sentence. So I really liked this planning activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that planning activity for the writing and that ELA side of things. Yeah. But let's say you're a social studies teacher or a math teacher. Yes. How would you say teachers can still integrate in, in one of those subjects? 
Yeah, so good question. So let's say I was a fifth grade teacher and I wanted to meet my history, US history standards. So as a teacher, I can create those parameters. So maybe I want my students to pick a character from US history in a certain time period and code a hero from that period. Or maybe I'm a music teacher and I want my students to create a certain musical loop that creates a certain mood. Um, what I love about CS First is that it's so flexible that teachers can really bend it to make it fit their classroom needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important that it is flexible. Yeah. Teachers can tailor it to their classroom's needs because they know, of course, their students and those needs the best. Um, and I guess on that note, let's dive into the actual coding action. Yes. So at this point, teachers and librarians, you can either watch or you can follow these steps along with me. So a recording will be sent out within the next week so that you can rewatch it and try it out or you can code along with me now. So the first thing we need you to do is we want you to leave this WebEx tab untouched, but we need you to open up another tab so that you can open up the CS First website. So open up another tab and please go to g.co slash CS first. Again, it's g.co slash CS first. That will bring you to the CS first landing page. And on there, in the top right hand corner, you will see a blue button that prompts you to sign in. So go ahead and click on that button, sign in. If you need me to slow down or speed up at any point, go ahead and write that in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll slow down or speed up for you. So after you click on the blue sign in button, you will get this screen that asks what best describes you. So for this particular activity, we want you to sign in as a student. And why a student? It's because we want to walk you through the process that your students will be walking through. So go ahead and click on I'm a student. And that should bring you to a page that says student sign in. So under new students, you are going to enter our demo class code. So in that box, please type in 8HTFDY. Again, that code is 8HTFDY. And that will allow you to become a student in our demo class. So Janelle, could you tell me where this class code came from? Did you make it up? Did you get it somewhere? Yes, good question, Cass. So as a teacher for this demo class, I set this up beforehand in the CS First tab. So we have these directions for you. It's super simple. It's included in the webinar guide. The webinar guide was emailed to you yesterday with this registration page. Um, but also know if you somehow misplaced it or if you didn't get it, we will send it out again when we send out this deck to you. Okay, so hopefully everybody has been able to enter in our class code. And go ahead and click on next. So you'll get a pop-up screen that asks, is this your class? So you should see the class name, Hour of Code Webinar, and my name is the teacher. And if you do, I would like you to click on yes, join. And Janelle, if we're having someone saying that a class code isn't working, do you have another they could try? Yes, so if that class code is not working for some reason, I know we have a lot of people tuning in, um, please try this class code. It is HF. 7XX7. Again, a class code for those who are having problems with that first one. It is HF7XX7. And you'll see as you type in the class code, it'll automatically enter as caps, so you won't have a choice. It's not case sensitive. Thanks. Mm -hmm. After you click on yes, join, you will get this pop-up that asks you, do you need a new CS First username and password? Since we are doing this as a student, we want you to click on yes. We want you to create a student username and password. So go ahead and click on yes. 
After you click on yes, go ahead and write down that username and password. Take a screenshot of it, take a picture of it with your phone, jot it down somewhere where you won't lose it. That's because you will use these same credentials to log into Scratch once we start the coding activity. We'll give everybody a second to note down their username and password. And when you told folks to open that new tab, one more time, could you tell us that address for the new tab? Yes, the address for the new tab, sorry, to go to the CS First website, that was g.co slash CS First. g.co slash CS First. So once you have joined our class and you've created a student username and password, you should come to this dashboard, which is your student dashboard. So what you'll see is my classes, and you'll see a blue tab that says HOC webinar, or Hour of Code webinar. So under the current activities, you'll see a blue title called Code Your Hero. And if you click on that, that will take you to the activity page. And the activity page looks just like this. So on the activity page, if you scroll down, you'll see two different tabs. The first tab, which is underlined now, is the activities tab. And the second tab is the materials tab. The materials tab is where we have the lesson plans and the optional planning activities. You can also download the videos just in case you have problems with um, internet connection. There are a variety of tools that are listed for you in the materials tab. In the activities tab, you will find the videos in both English and in Spanish. So, here we are on the materials tab, introduction from hero to superhero under Code Your Hero. Go ahead and click on that blue title and that will take you to the video. Because our time together is super limited, we are going to just give you an overview of what the video is. So all CS First activities come with an introduction video, and all introduction videos are about four minutes long. In the introduction video, you will always have a host who introduces computer science and how it's relevant to students. After he introduces computer science, he then will go over the activity. So in this particular case, Kamar, our host, is going over the Code Your Hero activity. He explains what an everyday hero is, and he gives us a few examples of what everyday heroes could be. After he explains that, he then goes through the step-by-step -step process of coding the hero. So the students will watch the video of exactly what blocks to drag out and where to find them. It's a very thorough step-by-step -step process of what the students need to do. Then, as Kamar is explaining what to do, he will always explain what the computer science concept is. So in this case, Kamar is explaining that what we're doing is sequencing. So this is very helpful for me as a teacher because I don't know these computer science terms necessarily, so it's great that they pop up in the video. Mm -hmm. And they're great vocab words if you want to use that as an element of it too. Yeah. But I had a question about the video itself and yeah. playing it in your classroom. Mm -hmm. Do you, I know there are a few different ways you can do it, but do you tend to find it's helpful to have students watch it on their own with earbuds, together as a class, with a partner, or how do you see this working? Such a good question, Cass. So every teacher, you know, will do it at their own discretion, but the way I like to do it is I like to show this introductory video whole class. I like to get the students started all together. We'll watch the video together. We'll have a little discussion about what the activity is and what they need to do. And then at that point, they start coding independently on their own. So they'll put on their earbuds if they want to rewatch the video, and then they'll start coding and then they can go off at their own pace. Sometimes you'll see students collaborate with each other or try things out with each other. Um, it's very flexible, and I allow the students to work however they want to, whatever works best for them. Yes, good question. At the very end, I usually leave this screen up since I'm showing it whole class. 
the very end of every video is a now it's your turn page. And it's basically a step-by-step -step outline of what the students need to complete once they start coding. Okay, so now let's go back to our CS First tab so that we can start coding. So I'm going to just minimize this and go to my CS First tab. This was the video that we just gave you an overview on. And to the right of it is the starter project. So go, go ahead and click on the starter project link and that will open up a new tab in Scratch. Here we are. So this project has been started for us. It has a hero, it has a little background, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to sign in so that we can save our work. So please click on the sign in button in the top right hand corner. And go ahead and use the username and password that you generated on the CS First website. So your username will be something like CS and then a bunch of numbers. And then your password will be something like 42 Thunderbolt. So go ahead and enter that information now. Now, invariably, teachers, you know that this will happen. You'll get a student who says, I didn't write down my username and password. That's okay. Usually they don't remember their CS First username because it's a long list of numbers, but they do remember their password. So on your teacher dashboard, when you log into CS First as a teacher, you can see the list of all the usernames and the passwords. So my students will usually say, I don't know my username, but I remember my password was 42 Thunderbolt. I can look that up on my teacher tab and I can tell them what their username is. Mm -hmm. Great. And right now, since you're going through this project as a student, you won't see that. But when you make that teacher account, like Janelle said, you'll see your teacher dashboard and have access to those students. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in as a student. Hopefully everybody has had some time to do that. And I always prompt my students to remix. So remix, you can think of it as like the save button. What we're doing is we're taking the starter project and we're making it our own or a remix. So I tell my students to push on the remix button so that they don't start coding and forget to save their work. So now it says project saved as a remix. And now we're ready to start coding. So as we watch the video with Kamar, you will see that the first thing he has you do is choose a costume. So you have three different tabs across the top, which is code, costumes and sounds. Go ahead and click on the costumes tab and you'll see a variety of costumes that you can choose from in order to code your hero. So you can scroll through these just to see what kind of hero do I want to make. Now that optional planning activity that was available, it has the students drawing their hero and creating it in Scratch. You can do that before you get into the actual coding activity. You can just have the students pick one of these ready-made heroes. Um, you can even pick one of these ready-made heroes and kind of customize it a little bit. So the hero that I'm coding about is my co-teacher, Mrs. Ferry. So I'm gonna pick hero number seven because Mrs. Ferry sometimes has a braid like this. Cass, I don't think that it's appropriate for her to have a rocket. She's not really in space or anything. Yeah, or... I think you should customize her a little bit. I and also, so. it's a great way to show how students can customize these sprites as well. Yes. Okay, so if we don't want that jetpack. Yes, so in this little drawing area, I'm just going to click on that jetpack and I'm going to click on delete. Um, but I want her to have something else and she's flying through the air. So as I was scrolling through the costumes, I found that costume number four has some wings and how appropriate Mrs. Fairy could use some fairy wings. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to click on Command C. If you're using a PC, you would just use Control C. Um, I'm going to copy this wing and put it back here on Mrs. Fairy around as I see fit. Let me just get her other, this other wing, and attach. And 
she's flying. You look great. I'm sure the teachers and the librarians who are tuning in with us are going through all of these different costumes. Um, there are many to choose from, which are great, and they have a variety of ethnicities. We even have a dog. Um, there are so many things that you can choose from. So once you actually pick your costume, and I know that teachers probably want to change the hair color or the color of the clothes, um, but we have a limited time today, so I'm going to actually start coding. After I've gotten my hero to where I want it to be, I'm going to click on the code tab. So right next to the costume, so we're going to go back to code. Go ahead and click on code. And I can see down here my hero is selected. It's blue. And now, in the video, Kamar says we need to have our hero say something in order to show this hero's personality or what kind of hero qualities does this hero embody. So in the looks menu, you'll see a purple circle with looks. Click on that looks menu and you'll see this block say hello for two seconds. This is a block that Kamar instructed us to drag out to make our hero speak. So I'm going to drag out two of these blocks and I'm just clicking and dragging into this coding area here and connecting them. So instead of saying hello, maybe I'm going to have Mrs. Berry introduce herself. So I'm just going to double click on the hello so it's highlighted and then I can change the text. I'll say hi. Name is Mrs. And Mrs. Berry is a hero to me because she's super patient and she's very kind. So I'm going to say something about that. Once you have changed up the text in your coding block, go ahead and click on it to test it out. So click anywhere on the purple. Perfect, it works. So I could also tinker with the seconds value if I want her to speak for longer, if I want the words to show up for a longer amount of time so that my audience can read it. I can go ahead with tinker with those values, but it looks like two seconds was good. Beautiful. So I have a question because I can yeah. be a little indecisive when I'm coding when there are so many options and, you know, so many blocks you can use. Um, and I imagine students might face this problem too. What does a student do if they added a block and they're not happy with it or they just want to change something up? Yes, good question. And I actually learned this from a student. So let's say, for example, I dragged out too many say blocks um, and I don't want that block anymore. All I have to do is drag it out of the coding area and it disappears. Wow, like magic. Exactly. It's an easy fix. Yes. Okay. The last thing that Kamar instructed us to do in the video is to add an event. So on the left hand side, you'll see a yellow circle. It says events. Go ahead and click on that. And we are going to drag out when gr the green flag is clicked. So I'm just going to drag that out and attach it to the top of my block stack. So now when I click on this green flag, my code should work. Can we test it out? Let's do it. All right. Hooray! Teachers and librarians, I hope that you were able to do it too. And guess what? We just sequenced code. We did it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I think students might be working at different paces, just as the webinar participants might be. So what do you do if one student is super speedy, finishes ahead of time, and wants to do a little more? Yes. Good question. So this is the great thing about CS versus that we have so many options. So I'm going to go back to the CS first tab. And under this introduction video, we have seven different add-on videos. So there is a start here video, move your hero. So all students, whenever they finish coding um, the two second blocks and adding a flag to their, uh, an event to their coding box, we will go and we'll start with this add-on start here, move your hero. And then students will watch this two minute video on how they can move their hero. 
So then they'll watch the video, they'll go back to scratch and they'll code some more. And then if we have super speedy coders, they can always go back to this and add more um, add-ons to their code. And the add-ons are special because it really makes all these different projects unique. And I always encourage my students to pick the add-on videos that piques their interest. That way they're more vested in what they're coding. So I always have a classroom full of students who some work at a very slow pace and some are like, I can't keep up with them. They're moving as fast as they can. So some of my students might only finish two add-ons. And some of my faster students might finish five add-ons or six add-ons. So what's great is that the students can keep working at their own pace. And tell me about the order of those add-ons. After students finish that Move Your Hero, can they go to a different one? Does it have to be the next one in a sequence? Good question. No, they can pick any one that they want. After they click on Start Here, Move Your Hero, they can Choose any add-on and go in any order that they please. Great. Okay, so I am sure that there are teachers still coding because it's super fun to do this. Um, so sometimes it's really hard to wrap up. Um, the good thing about CS First, I'm going to go back to our slide deck. The good thing about CS First is that it the lesson plans come with some good wrap-up questions. So I like the students to reflect. This can be an exit ticket. This can be a whole group discussion. Um, teachers can use this however they want, but it's a good way for the students to reflect on the learning that was done. But the most fun part about wrapping up is having the students share their projects with each other. So sometimes we'll do this as a gallery walk. Um, sometimes we'll do this as a pair share, but I always encourage my students to share their work. So I'm gonna actually go back to my scratch tab and show you the share button. So on Scratch at the top, there's an orange share button here. And if I click on it, I've now shared my project with the Scratch community. And as if you, the teacher, are sharing, you are sharing your project and I'll be able to open it in my teacher dashboard in CS First. And we would love for you to share your projects with us. But also, while I'm on this page, I want to show this copy link. So this copy link is how I get my students to be able to share their projects with like their eighth grade buddies or with their parents. So we usually will copy this link and I'll add it to their digital portfolio. That way um, anyone can visit their project and tell them how great they did. Love it. So, um, yeah. I want to see these projects that your students make too though. So we have something called the Scratch Studio, which is sort of a curated gallery of projects on Scratch. And when you're sent the slides after this webinar, in the last slide, there's gonna be a link to our Scratch Studio. You can click on it, comment your URL link, and uh, our studio manager can add that to the Scratch Studio. And so we have all those projects together. Here are a few example projects that students have created that are already in our Scratch Studio. So we have a super friend and a super doctor, and that's just a small taste of what your students can create. Yeah, I think um, one of the best parts about working on this team is that when we get to look at student projects to see what they've created, it's super fun. Mm -hmm. um, but what if teachers want to share their work? Can we do that? Yes, actually, Twitter is a great place for teachers to share their work. And right now, if you tweet, the best part of teaching CS First for Hour of Code is dot, 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 fill in the blank, and you hashtag CS First, hashtag code your hero and tag Google for education, you actually have a chance to be featured on the official Google blog, which I think is pretty cool. Yes, that um, is very cool. And then the CS First team also, we love to scroll through Twitter and see your projects. And I know I sometimes will reply to them or favorite them. So it's just a great way to share what you're working on and see what others have created too. Yes. And I'm sure there are teachers still busy coding away, but as you code, I think that we have some time to answer some questions. Yes, let's see. This will be on that Q&A tab of WebEx. We have one question about the remix button, and this is a great question, one that we've gotten before. Does it act as a save button or does it change the project? Yes, so think of the remix button as the save button. There is no save button anywhere. Remix is your save button. And I'll go back to the Scratch tab to show you how students can go back and find their work. 
So I'm going to go back and see inside, go back to my project. Um, but over here, if I click on my username and I go to my stuff, this will have a list of all the things that I have remixed as well as shared. So these are all the things that I have created or remixed, so it's saved in my My Stuff tab. Great. Good answer, Janelle. Um, what if YouTube is blocked? Will these videos still play? Good question. Yes. So these videos are not in YouTube. I'm assuming the CS First videos. They are actually yes. on the CS First website. If for some reason you are having issues with bandwidth or you can't stream, you can also download the videos on the materials tab and you can just project them for your students to watch as well. Great. Good to know. Yeah. See. Anyone else has any questions? Now is the perfect time to ask those on that Q&A section. Otherwise, can you think of anything else you want to add? Oh, I do want to add one more thing. So um, as you're coding, this is this super fun part, and I know you're working away, but we also want to make sure that you're prepared when hour of code actually comes um, and you're ready to do this in your classroom. So I just want to show the webinar guide. It's just a quick checklist that you can use, the steps that you need to do before the hour of code and the things that you do on the day of hour of code. So this is a handy little reference sheet that I think might be useful um, to make sure you have a great hour of code experience. Thanks for sharing that. It's a great resource. Yes. I have one more question. A couple more, excuse me. Oh, now they're all coming in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do we need to save the user ID and password that generated user ID and password? Do we need to save those for future activities? Um, you as a student, yes. So let's say I did this hour of code activity with my class, which I already did. My students are asking me, when can we do the next coding activity in CS First? I want my students to save that same username and password so that they can have all of their projects saved on that one account. So yes, we, you need to save that username and password. So. The teachers will have that on their teacher dashboard. I've heard a variety of ways teachers um, keep this information handy. Some teachers make their students fill out a Google form with their username and password so that the teachers have it all in one spreadsheet. Um, some teachers will take screenshots of it and send it to them and have students keep it in their Google Classroom. There are a variety of ways in which you can keep th this information, but yes, this information needs to be kept. If you need to generate a new username and password, it's not the end of the world. It's just mm -hmm. nice to have all of your projects saved to one account. Right. You can also do it the old-fashioned way in handy-dandy notebook and just yes. keep, keep a close hold on that. Yes. So we got another question about integration with Google Classroom. Could you tell us about that? How might that work? Yes. So we can assign it and put in the link in Google Classroom for the CS First activity. Um, but the students will not actually be able to automatically save all their stuff to Google Classroom. Um, teaching first grade, I have to be honest, I haven't used it much with Google Classroom, um, but I know other teachers that I've helped have made that assignment through their Google Classroom. Great. And back to that remix button. Yes. After you start coding, mm -hmm. what happens to it? Saving, it disappears? No, once you remix it, you can think of it like a Google Doc. As you work away, it'll just save, it'll be there. Yes. So just that first click is what's crucial. Correct. Great. Yeah. Great. I think those are all the questions we have for now. Okay. Anything else you want to add, Janelle? No, I hope that you have fun coding. I hope that you have this great student experience. Um, like I said, when you're ready to set this up for your own classroom, please use the webinar guide that we've created. Um, and happy coding. I can't wait to see what your students are able to do. Yes, happy hour of code. Thanks for being here. And we're super excited to see what you create. Yes.